What is good everyone? I'm Forrest Walker and hello from Mintz Belarus. So I promised I'd do at least one photo walk talk video here while I'm covering Minsk. I'll probably do one more too, but we're going to start off with Independence Avenue because while I really like Minsk, I think it uh, has a lot of character here for photography. There are some challenges that come with it, and one of the biggest ones is how spread out it is. You don't have a high concentration of life and spots, interesting spots to hit in a small area. You do have to explore, you do have to take transportation and or walk a lot if you want to hit a lot of different interesting spots. But there's a few exceptions to that, and I think Independence Avenue is maybe the best exception. It's the main avenue here. It goes through a lot of interesting spots, squares markets and I'm gonna get more into describing and sharing a little bit about that walk but first let me give you a quick recap of what a photo walk talk is if you haven't seen some of the other ones I've done what it really is it's, it's my kind of twist on the photo walk videos you might have seen from other photographers but instead of taking you out on the walk with me it's more about bringing you back and taking the photos from the walk and learning from those. So I'm going to share different insights. I'm going to share some context and a little bit about the walk. So if you're ever here, you can take the walk here in Mintz. But really, it's about learning from your photos. So I select around 20 photos and give you kind of off the cuff things that I see. Because learning from your own photos and looking through your own photos and also learning from other people's photos, I think, is one of the best ways to improve and learn other than getting out there and photographing. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to get more into that. But now we're going to go into my computer here. I'm going to talk about the walk, share a map, show you all the different spots that I hit to give you some context, go a little bit more into what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to get into the photos that I selected and go through them one by one. And then after we get done with that, then we'll come back out of my computer and I'll share a couple of the key points and insights I think we can take from the photos we covered and the photo walk along Independence Avenue. Just anything I think that might help. So let's get into my computer and look at Independence Avenue in Mintz, Belarus. Let's go. All right, so here we have Mintz, Belarus. And we're going to be covering Independence Avenue, which runs through the center of the city here. Get a little closer to show you. And so here's the center here. We're going to start around Independence Square here and then go all the way up to here. But you can go further up to National Library. It's a really long avenue. And I made a quick little map here to show you the, the highlights here on the walk. So here you start on Independence Square. You're going to walk up, you're going to pass a gum. If you're not familiar with that, in ex-Soviet countries, they're basically like large department stores. So if you're ever in Minsk, I would stop there. It's kind of interesting. But you're going to pass that, and then you're going to go up to October Square. You're going to see photos from there. That's another major square. And right now during the um, Christmas time, there's also a Christmas market there. And then you can keep going here, and you would go through a couple parks here. The bigger one is Gorky Park. I do have a picture from there. I stopped there real quick. Then you go up to Vic Victory Square here, which is, it's not like the other squares. It's basically, as you can see, uh, the road surrounds it here. But there is a eternal flame there and a monument. But there's never really anything going on there. But you can check it out. I do have a foot one photo from there. And then you could keep walking. Um, and I did. But also, this whole time you could take a, the metro here, and I do have a few photos from the metro coming on the way back. But there's not a whole lot between here, but again, I did walk it. And then you would come up to here, there's another square here. And then uh, the highlight up here, though, I'd say is just going off uh, Independence Avenue and checking out Kamaruski Market. Um, it's the biggest market here in Minsk and one of the more interesting places, I'd say, to photograph, especially because there's always a lot of activity going on there. So also you could keep going on Independence Avenue and go all the way up to the National Library. Now I did do that, but I took the Metro there because there's really not a whole lot in between. Um, we're mainly going to just cover this section, but I do have a few photos from up here too. There's not a whole lot going on up here except for the National Library, but there is uh, right around the National Li Library, there are some nice neighborhoods and courtyards that were actually pretty interesting when I checked them out. All right, so before we get into the photos, let me just give you a quick overview of what I'm going to do when I go through these photos. Now, it's going to be really off the cuff. I did select around 20 photos to go over, ones that I thought we could, I could share some different insights on. So not the best photos I took, but not the worst either. Things that I, that I could have uh, done better, but also things that I can explain why I took the photo. But normally when you're looking at photos, it's either is it good or not, how do you feel about it. But for this exercise, we're going to try to be a little more critical and when I'm trying to learn from my photos some of these questions I'll ask for this exercise I'll even ask more questions so you can get even more insight 
on how I look at photos. And it's going to be really off the cuff too. I didn't prepare anything because I think it's best just to tell you what I first see. So first we're going to look at what works. I'm going to tell you what I think works personally, what doesn't work. I'll explain maybe what I was going for, what grabbed me. Usually when you, you take a photo, you should be able to explain that, I think. Um, I'll explain if there's anything that bothers me or that I wish could have been. Maybe it was in my control or maybe it wasn't. And if it wasn't, I'll explain that because you can only see what's in the photo. You can't see outside the frame. So sometimes there are reasons that you didn't do certain things that were out of your hands. Um, but I will explain what maybe I could have done differently. Uh, if I can, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of how I approached that scene to give some insights there. Um, maybe some challenges that I ran into, and then just an overall feeling. And then we'll finish off just with some lessons taken or emphasized by looking through the photos. Actually, one thing real quick, sometimes photos just work. So I don't want to get too uh, focused on being critical. That's just for this exercise. So sometimes photos, um, you could technically break them apart, but if they're a good photo, they're a good photo. But for again, for this exercise, we're going to break photos apart. So let's get into Lightroom now. And I have some photos up here. Um, we'll start off with this one. This one's actually not on the walk, but because I did start at Independent Square, I just want to give you a quick uh, view of what Independent Square looks like because on the walk there was not a whole lot going on. And to be honest, while this is, I'd say, visually the most appealing square, it's a beautiful square, there's not a whole lot going on there usually. But um, here you can see there's a nice church here. Um, behind me, there's actually a, a, a Lenin statue too. Right now, of course, they have the Christmas tree. This was actually the first day I got here. So you see the blue sky. I really didn't see a lot of blue sky after the first day. It's too bad because the light is beautiful. But that's just so you get an idea of what Independence Square looks like. But now we'll get into the walk. So it had snowed. Um, so there was some nice snow there. And most of the city, there's not a, a snow on the sidewalks and things like that, but around certain areas, the snow stays. And so here, what I was doing, uh, first off, I mean, the, the Christmas tree's nice, and then you have the white of the snow, but really my focus was, I saw this boy playing around and he had this white uh, snow cap here. And the white, obviously, it goes, it kind of camouflages or disappears into the snow. So I was playing around with that. He was running around. So I wanted to get a photo where, you know, it gave a little bit of an illusion there. Not necessarily illusion, but you, you know what I'm, I'm getting at. So that's really what I was playing with there. Um, yeah, I didn't get exactly what I wanted, but you can see what I was going for. So it has some nice mood with the, the Christmas time atmosphere. Um, and then there's that going for it, but I still I think it, it needs a little more than that and maybe a little more focus on this Okay, now we're going down Independence Avenue in between Independence Square and October Square and here I was just walking There's not a lot going on on the sidewalk, but I did see these children here playing. I, I like the clothes here um, You have the little snow caps here um, Here you have her carrying this my little pony like figure so they were running around the baby the the parents are off to the side here so as i was walking i liked the scene as they were running around and i tried to catch it when she was coming forward so i could see this and then she was going down because I, I do like her yellow jacket here also I, I like the um actually probably what i like most about this photo is the uh gesture here i, I caught her in mid run so she's at an angle here and this girl's at an angle too and then there's a baby in the middle. I like the flow of this photo. Overall, I actually I do like this photo. I, I don't love the, the background here, but it's not that, that big of a deal. I think I got what I wanted here. So overall, this, I think this is an okay photo. Here we have the metro station right before October Square. I've taken this metro station quite a bit, and I like it because of the symbols here. You have the hammer and sickle, the CCCP or USSR. Uh, Soviet uh, symbols and artwork it's kind of cool and so I was trying to get a photo of that for this walk especially to show you and I wanted obviously more than this so I waited for some people to you know separate here and I got mostly what I wanted um, she's she's here everyone separated nicely they were having a conversation so that's uh, when you're doing layers sometimes it's good to have people that are stationary or they're not moving you can call them anchors so these men are there 
they're going to stay there because they're having a conversation. And so other people are walking. So you already have something there. And then you wait for other pieces to come together and just time it right. Um, so overall, I like it, but I don't really love that he's looking at me. Unfortunately, right when I took the shot, he looked at me. So that kind of takes away a little bit of the, you know, it's still, I'd call it candid, but it takes a little bit of that away. So overall, though, I mean, you just have this background and you have people walking by. This is about as good as you can get, I'd say. Um, it would be nice if there was actually something more happening, but the odds of that happening are pretty slim right in this area because people are just walking to and from the metro station usually. Here's October Square. So this photo, um, they've set it up for the Christmas market. There's there's a little booths here and they're I, th I don't think they were completely finished, but there's other stuff going on here. But you have the, the truck here. And for me, I don't, I don't know, for, for our other viewers, uh, without knowing what's going on, you probably think this maybe is fog, but it's, it's not fog. There's, there's actually construction workers to the left here, and they're uh, piecing together some of the bricks, so they're having to cut them and place them in there. I don't know what happened, but maybe something broke, and so they had to redo it in, uh, in a patch. So what I liked was it created this almost, it looks like fog or smoke uh, when it's really just the, the dust from, from cutting these bricks. So I took a few photos trying to get that mood in there, getting this mist in here. I needed, it, needed the um, ground here to really show you uh, that smoke or fog or whatever you want to call it because it was an overcast day. You wouldn't really see it here. And also I wanted something in the frame other than the Christmas tree. Um, I kind of wish this wasn't there, but it's not a big deal. And then I, so I was waiting for a man to walk by or a person to walk by. And I like that he's wearing dark clothes. So it stands out more catching him in mid step there, separated by everything else. There wasn't anything going on right, right when I walked by here. So I actually waited quite a bit just to get one person to walk anywhere near me. So overall, I, I think I got what I wanted here, but that's what I was going for. Again, it could use maybe something more. It's more just of an atmosphere type of photo. This is that tree that you saw there just closer. Now here's, I'd say, kind of a cliche trick. I'm sure if you've looked at street photography, you've seen people do similar things. So you're, you're doing the, the hide the person's face. So these they're selling these. These balls light up here. They, they have like LEDs in them. And so he was on his phone. So... I noticed that and I, I like the position of these. They kind of, you know, cover his head, but camouflage it in a way you can still kind of see his face there. So that's what I was going for. So it's just a simple trick that it, it needs something more for it to be a really good photo. So now I keep going down uh, Independence Avenue and you pass Gorky Park. I did kind of uh, veer off and detour through there just to check it out. I've been there quite a few times now. Is It's a really nice park. There's a, a theme park there, but it's closed. There's a lot of different stuff going on there. There's a skating rink. There, there's different stuff going on, but right now there's not a whole lot of activity. So it's really just a scenic walk whenever I've gone through. But for this photo walk, I wanted to get at least one photo from there to show you. Because if you're in Minsk, I would check out Gorky Park. And I don't know if you're if you're familiar with Soviet Soviet countries, Gorky is a... Is a is, there's lots of Gorky parks. Uh, the most famous one is in Moscow, but that usually just means that's like the big mar uh, one of the biggest parks in the city, if not the biggest. And in Minsk, that's the case here too. So luckily, there was something going on here. There was two boys having a snowball fight here. So I tried to get something out of that. They're very far apart, so they have to be really small in the photo, unfortunately, um, to get them both in there. So I needed some type of separation, some contrast, so I waited till he was in front of this area here so he stands out more as you can see uh, while doing that he kind of gets lost in the trees there so you can just see his face unfortunately so for this photo be to be better I would have liked them to be both in front of this if he was standing right here you could really see him but I what I liked about this photo though was what I do in certain instances if they're just having the snowball fight and just standing there after they throw it, it's just going to look like two boys standing there. But if you can catch them in mid gesture while he's throwing it, you're going to get some interest there. It attracts the eye a little more. As you can see, he stands out way more than him because of his gesture and his jacket standing out and everything. And it makes you look a little closer and then maybe you can see that because that's kind of hard to see. But since you can tell he just did something, it probably 
more viewers would see that. But again, they're really small. The background is nothing special, just a lot of empty space. But in this instance, there wasn't a whole lot more I could have done. Here, I kept walking down Independence Avenue past Gorky Park. Now, I really like uh, the, the different officers' outfits. Um, I like their, their uh, fur caps. They're kind of a navy blue. I, I really like their look. Now, in Belarus, they don't really want photos, so you have to take it pretty sly. So they didn't notice me take the photo, so I just did, took the photo as I walked by. But I like the colors here. I like the the navy. I like them. I, I waited till they separated a little bit, so you can, so they blend in together, but their faces are separated. So, I I I do like them quite a bit. The rest of this is not adding anything to it, and they're not doing anything but walking. But they do look kind of nice here. So right here, I like it, but the rest of it is not adding too much. But the colors work all right. I do like the colors. Now this is in under victory. Uh, Victory Square. There's a monument, like I said, an eternal flame. Again, in Soviet ex-Soviet countries, they always have an uh, eternal flame, which is a it's it's an actual flame uh, monument. So that's above this. So to get underneath the road, because that square is surrounded by road, you have to go underneath a tunnel. And then I noticed that they were playing a it was a repeated like film. I don't really know what it was about, but it looked like it was about war. So I just took a few photos of that. I kind of like the lights here, the colors, but there's nothing more to that. And I just wanted to take one photo at the monument because other than that, there was nothing going on. I, I took a photo of the flame too, but it's just a picture of the flame. There was no people around. Um, and then surrounding the monument is just cars driving by. So it's not a great place for photos, to be honest. But underneath, I did actually wait for people to walk by, but it, it didn't really help underneath here either. So this goes up to the next square. There's an underpass here. It's a really long one. And right now during um, the holidays, there's a lot of people selling things uh, for Christmas. But then there's the normal people selling things too. This man here is selling these canes. Now what I liked about him is I like his, his outfit here and he's got the cane like that and these canes here. So it's a simple photo. There, there's this one, there's really, that's all it is. It's almost like a, you know, a street portrait, I guess. It's a candid portrait, but it's still. And there's all the space here, so it needs something more. There's not, there's not enough here, but you can see him. Here's a woman selling little trees here for Christmas, things like that. So here I like this photo definitely better than the last one. There's at least some interest there, more than the person. So she has these trees here. So she was holding this tree for a while as people walked by. And then as she turned, I clicked the shutter here to, to take the photo with this tree covering her face. It's a lot better than just her holding it, uh, you know, face forward, because at least there's a little mystery there, kind of blends in. So that's what I was going for, and I got what I was going for. Maybe it could it could use something more, but um, yeah, I got what I was go going for in this photo. This is a f an instinctual photo as I was walking by. Again, I do like these fur hats. I already saw this woman. I wanted to get him as he walked by and get her because basically because they're both interesting characters. They kind of have that character of Minsk and Belarus, and then you have the you know, the marble wall here. So I got it, but I wish it was, uh, he was a little bit closer. There's a little too much space here. She's on the corner edge and yeah, and he's a little blurry. I don't, that doesn't bother me too much, but there's just too much space here. They're both on the edges, but I do like these characters together. Okay. Now we're closer to Kamaruski market. This is right, uh, almost to it. And so I saw this man as I was walking there and he has a, you know, this is another thing you're seeing in a lot of photos lately uh, since, since people vape. Because of all that smoke, it's become a popular trend in street photography because of the look it creates and especially when the light hits it. Now most of those photos, they all look the same, but there's a few really good ones out there um, that, that show a lot more than just the smoke they add to it. But this one, I mean... He walked by. What I do like about it is, is the nice line of smoke and the light was coming out a little bit here. And his look isn't bad either. So I, I mean, this is, it is what it is basically. The background is, is okay, but not great either. So it needs something more. It's not enough. And it's, it's, 
it's just a picture of him smoking, but there's a nice look to it, I'd say, overall. Okay, now we're in Kamaruski Market. Now, my favorite part of Kamaruski Market is probably where they sell the fish. Now, if you're not familiar with Kamaruski Market, which most people are definitely probably not, it's it's uh, the main part of the market is all inside. It's actually pretty nice, but it, I wouldn't say it's good for photography at all because it's inside for one, and you have like the fluorescent lights and just people behind the glass counters everywhere. And so it's just that type of market. It's not good for light and it's not good for activity and it's just not good to me. But what I do like is right outside the market, there's uh, more lines of stalls, there's produce, there's uh, right now there's a lot of Christmas things going on. But then over here you have people selling fish. People will wait in line and then they pick the fish they want and then they weigh it, put it in the bags and sell it. Then you have these guys behind the live, they're live fishing here. Every so often he'll pull some out and put them in the buckets here. So what I was going for here is trying to get some layers here, have everything, you know, the whole frame filled with different things to look at, catcher and mid gesture here with the fish. And what stopped me for, um, first though was this woman too. I like her outfit with the red hat and the fur coat. So out of all the photos I took here, this was the best one because it does fill the frame pretty well. She's here, he's here, she's in the middle there, he's up here, you have the fish here, nothing going on here. But other than that, the frame's pretty filled, like the gesture, uh, colors are okay. So I got what I, what I wanted. Uh, there's still, it needs something more, maybe she could be looking, like you can't see her face at all. So it needs something more, but it does, does give you a feeling of uh, this place here where they sell the fish. This is another picture. This uh, this works better with the light because the light came out for a bit here, but uh, there's not as much going on as the other picture, but visually it might be more, I'd say it's more appealing because the light's nice. You have a little more mystery here. here. Her face is covered in the shadow. You have her hood here. So that's one thing you can do in the cold weather where everyone's wearing these hoods. Add a little mystery there with the light when you have the light. So this is more of a mood photo while I'd say this one there's more, a lot more going on, a lot more interesting things to look at. This one's a little, probably visually more appealing. But still, I would, I would like something more. So here's some of the, the lines of stalls. Um, this is more produce. So you had the woman, women. Uh, here I'm tr just trying to get some symmetry, some balance. So you have the women here looking opposite directions, which works. And then I just waited for this man, I saw this little hole here, and the lights, I was waiting for this man to get in the middle, and then he he saw me, and then he looked, but I actually don't mind that he's looking there, it brings you in a little bit more. So I got what I wanted here, but again, it's, it's probably, well, it's it needs something more, but I, I got what I wanted. Okay, so here, this is where they're selling Christmas trees, obviously. So I, I was trying to get something from the Christmas trees. I didn't really get anything. But then I saw there was a lot, a lot of different things going on. And there's some frames within frames. You have them framed here together. They're eating. I like this little advertisement, this woman up here. You have this little stand here, and she's, she's framed in there. And then there's these, this gate. They're kind of framed in there. And you have the Christmas trees. And so I had that all set up, and then I was wait, waiting for something to happen or maybe some gesture. And then she put her hands up, which kind of imitates that. So, you know, there was something going on when she put her hands up to fix her hat, so that's why I took the photo there. So, yeah, overall, it, there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I love it, but, but it's, it's not bad. Okay, so this is outside of the market, walking back to Independence Avenue. Here's a woman that just bought these. Here, I just like the colors. I like her the color of her hat here. And I saw her coming, and she has a mask on. Um, actually, in Belarus, there, there's no mask ordinance outside, so you don't see a lot of masks, but she has one on. Um, and then, so I was just waiting till she walked by. I was going for some symmetry, so I waited till she walked by in, in between the windows here and then trying to catch this here too. There, there's not a whole lot there. This is a more visual photo, I'd say, but definitely not a strong photo. It doesn't have enough. Okay, so now I wanted to show a few pictures in the um, Metro. So taking the Metro back, I actually went to the next, uh, to the National Library. I'll show, share, finish with a couple pictures from there. But here's the uh, Metro. 
And I just wanted to show this one. This is one of the stations that has uh, the hammer and sickle. I know some people would like that. It's, it's interesting. Now, in the in the metro station, you don't have the best light, unfortunately. But um, and there's people just you know walking in and out. So. You can get good photos in the metro, but if you're trying to include this, it's going to be pretty tough to get a good photo because you have to get so far back and now all the people are just small. So this is just a basic picture of the metro. There's absolutely nothing particularly interesting going on. This is just, just to show you the metro. Now, for getting actual decent photos in a metro, you have to get closer, try to find something interesting going on. I like this old man here. And he was, he was waiting for the next train, so he just had his head peered out here. And then the, the train was coming. I took a photo before the train came. But then as the train come, came, I tried to add that. So, yeah. Uh, overall, though, I don't really like this photo. Um, I like him. That's about it. The train's okay, but I, I really just like him. I don't like these people up here, the light. Uh, so it's just kind of a mess for me, but he's nice. So maybe I should have got more, more close to him. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything that could have been that great from this scene. Okay, over here, this is one of the stations. Uh, so the, the metro system in Minsk is a very typical Soviet, ex-Soviet type of uh, metro. So you have some of the, you know, artwork like this, but it's 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 just a typical metro system in the ex Soviet countries. It's not it's not extra nice like Moscow's or anything like that. But you have a few stations that have some artwork. So this is one of the nicer ones because of these here. And then I saw this couple here embracing. So I tried to uh, separate them and and kind of give them like gives it kind of a mood here. I'd say if I just sh shot it head on. Um, then it just would have been head on. But here it separates them like they're all alone type. And then you get some of that artwork in there. All right, so we're going to finish off. I don't want to take too long with this, but here we have by the National Library. Actually, I think I have a photo of that. So here we have the National Library, and this actually got voted. Uh, you know, I don't know what it was, but it was online. It won some award for being the ugliest uh, building of the year a few years ago. Uh, I actually think it's kind of an interesting building. It's the National Library of Belarus. So I guess people think it's ugly because it is weird looking, but I, I like it. Um, there's a tree there going right now, and there's actually a statue over here that's kind of cool too. But that's the National Library. Uh, you're not going to get anything more than just having it in the background. I tried to play around with the, uh, the tree here from across the street to, to frame it in there, but it, it's... It is what it is. It's just, I just wanted to show you the National Library, but that's what it looks like. But once I got there, I was hoping for something more around here. There was really nothing going on. But then luckily, I looked across the street, and there was... Let's go here. There was a lot of different apartment complexes, like the old Soviet apartment blocks and complexes with the courtyards and everything. And they have this nice... Uh, artwork here too. So I decided to check it out, which was interesting. And I, I got quite a few photos there. I'm only going to show this one and another so we don't take forever. But here's uh, what I was going for here was I wanted this in here, of course. I wanted a little bit of life in there. And then also I noticed there was this pole. So by putting this pole in here, it takes away the space between the buildings. It creates kind of a, a little, makes it a little more dynamic because it kind of blends this building, which is much much further out, in with this building that's more up close. It separates the two people here, so I, I timed it so she was here and then she was here. Then you have the tree here. So I, I do like, like this photo somewhat. I really like the artwork here. Yeah, there's not a lot of, you know, it's more of an atmosphere photo with a little bit of life. There's nothing going on in the foreground though, so it's not going to be a, a really strong photo. But it shows you the atmosphere and the look of the neighborhood, which I like. All right, so let's finish off with this photo here. I did explore all the different courtyards around all the different apartments. I liked that there was snow everywhere. It, it had a lot of uh, had a lot of great atmosphere. There wasn't a whole lot of life, but every once in a while you'd see people walking around and just exploring that area was was pretty pretty fun. And I'll definitely be going back there. But what made me stop here was I saw this. I think it's a DHS van uh, doing a delivery actually, but. I like the yellow. So I saw this yellow. It popped because the rest of the scene here is the white snow and then, you know, the uh, branches and this car's dark color. So the yellow kind of popped 
and it, it, it kind of, it, I, I liked it. There's something uh, about the color and the look that attracted me, but I needed something more. And then I saw these boys walking by and luckily they also had some color too. So the red and the blue here. So you have, when you have, uh, you know, mints doesn't have a lot of color. And then when you have the snow and the buildings, their buildings are light color. So you don't have a lot of color, but the good thing about that is when you do have a little bit of color in there, it does stand out. So that's what I was going for here with the yellow here and the two boys with their colorful clothes. And catching them in mid-step, I was waiting until they got in this little um, spot here without the snow. And then the car in the middle there. So there's some balance. So overall, I, I like the look and the mood of this photo. All right, so we'll finish off with this photo. I'm trying to keep the selections around 20 photos because these do take a while. I talk quite a bit just going over the photos, so I don't want to take forever. Um, there's plenty more photos I could have shown, but hopefully this is enough. And now we'll come out of my computer and we'll recap, and I'll share a couple of key points I think that we can take from this photo walk and these photos. All right, let's go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed looking at that walk and looking at some of the photos and took something from it. I think some of the key points are when you're dealing with a place or a walk where you have a lot of you know downtime in between walking where you don't see a lot of life, you really have to explore. So I think getting off the beaten path and exploring around and just really work at it, really find anything interesting. And then once you do find it, really hit it. Uh, when you have a lot of space, you can use the environment a lot too. But then if you can get up close too, with Minsk, even on Independence Avenue, where you do have more concentration of life than most spots, it's still not overwhelming like a lot of places. So you do really have to look, but I do think that if you look, you'll find a lot here, and it is different and unique. So I really enjoy Independence Avenue. I like the squares. Most of the squares are kind of quiet, but with Christmas time, they're actually quite a bit more lively, especially now with the markets coming out. And then the, the market... Kamaruski market is always pretty busy. So if you want that activity, I think that market is about as good as it, it gets here for concentration of life. And then other than that, just explore the streets, explore the squares, and just have fun with it. It's, it's a pretty relaxing walk. So, you know, you have places like India, which are the opposite, where you're just overwhelmed. Here you can kind of relax and, and really observe your surroundings. So in some ways, it, you can find the pluses too. So again, I hope you enjoyed looking through those photos. And I think for the next photo walk, if I do one here, I might do one just focused on the Christmas markets here. And from there, my, again, my channel is not focused on travel but we do cover the places I, I go to, but really we're covering learning. So when I cover the Christmas markets, I think we'll focus on night photography using artificial light and things like that. With all the Christmas markets here in Minsk, and especially because Minsk celebrates two Christmases, one on the 25th and then one on the 7th of January, they go for a while. So I'll have time to hit them at night and share how to photograph at night. I actually don't photograph so much at night compared to the day, as you can see in a lot of my work, but I do enjoy photographing at night when you do have that artificial light. We won't be doing any flash, so I focus on either natural or artificial light so I can share some different insights when you have all those Christmas lights out there that you can use for photography. But we're not gonna do that yet next week. Next week I do have a video plan though, so we'll get into that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, cheers.